it is Dave with Taboo Customs. In this video today, we are going to be installing our new uh, clock spring for the 2001-2002 Jeep TJs with cruise control. Yep, that is a big hole for the 2001s, 2002s with the wiring for the cruise control. So let's get started. All right, so if you own a 2001-2002 TJ, which I assume is why you're here, you may have found that it's difficult to find a uh, clock spring with cruise control for your Jeep. Uh, not sure why that has been, but uh, we've we've realized this over the last few years, so we've been working to come out and find a solution for that, and we now finally do. So we've got uh, a clock spring now that has the larger hole for the larger shaft in the 2001-2002 steering column, but then also has your wiring for your cruise control. So we've got a 2001 TJ here in the shop today. We're gonna to go ahead, go through the install process. So if you're wanting to see some more on that, you can watch the rest of this video. Or if you were just here trying to find a clock spring for your TJ, you can check the link in the description below or go to tabucustoms.com and search for the clock springs and you should be able to find one there. All right, the installation of the clock spring for the 2001-2002 TJ, pretty much exact same as the 97 through 2000. We did an earlier video on that, so we'll put that link in the description in case for some reason we gloss over something or miss something, you can also check that one out. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, disconnect the negative cable on your battery because we are gonna be uh, especially messing with the airbag and the electronics. Uh, best bets, just go ahead disconnect that. The next step is going to be removing the airbag. To remove the airbag there's going to be two bolts on the back side of it. Uh, eight millimeter bolts. They're pretty much at a 45 degree angle uh, depending on where your wheel is at, especially the inside one. It's probably going to be hard to see that bolt so just make sure you get on it square. That will just pull straight off. There will be two connectors on the back here. One for the airbag that we will just, well, I'll go get a flat screwdriver. Okay, so this one here, we'll pop that straight back. And then you'll have the spade connector down here which is, ooh, for the horn. I wanted to pull out. So then we'll set the airbag aside. The next step, we'll go ahead, we'll pull out this green connector, pull the little tab on it, and disconnect that. And then we need to remove the bolt from the steering wheel. This is, uh, on this Jeep, a 13 millimeter socket. We're actually going to use a impact because you need some extensions to try to get a ratchet in here. It can be really wonky trying to get that off. Um, so with an impact, taking it loose, much easier. Now to get this shaft off, or excuse me, get the steering wheel off the shaft, we're going to have to go get our puller. We'll get that set up and then we'll take a look. All right, so we do recommend just get yourself a pretty good uh, steering wheel puller kit. Um, you know, ours comes with all the bolts, so you got everything you really need. So we've got two bolts going down into the threaded holes in the steering wheel. The center bolt, which we'll use to then pull the steering wheel off. Oops. Don't yank it off too fast. you got to feed the wires you disconnected out of the holes. So once you have that done, you can set the steering wheel aside. So you can see what happens when uh, with these 
clock springs here basically they the kind of a catch-all for everything that goes down behind the steering wheel that can be water um, a lot of dirt debris other things and they can get to be uh, somewhat nasty and a lot of times that's why they will fail and uh, the ribbons in them will go bad and then the clock spring will stop working now the next step to get this clock spring off is we're gonna have to pull this panel down here and then we're gonna have to take these covers off to uh, be able to get to the connectors on the back side Now, in some TJs, we found that the screws under here can be Torx, but on this particular TJ, they're just Phillips head screws. So on this, you'll have two screws here at the front and then there's some tabs, but it's like ours, it pretty much fell apart. All right, for the connectors on the back side of the clock spring here, you've got two. You've got the small yellow one uh, and you'll be able to push up and then there is a white one in the center here, which I think you pull down on the tab on the clock spring and actually we'll pull that out. It's hard to do one handed. Uh, then to pull the clock spring out, there'll be a tab here on the bottom or and a tab up here on top that goes back into there and kind of locks in. You can just take and pry this up and those may break or if you want to get a real you know, long thin screwdriver, you can go in from the top and kind of pry up on the top one and pull it out and same thing here on the bottom. This little connector here, the tab for this one's on the bottom. Tab for this one over here is actually on the top. So it's a pain to get to. All right, before we reinstall this, let's cover a couple of uh, quick things about this. Now, you've got these two little green tabs on the back of this, and you've got this key here. Uh, now, it's important that uh, you have these lined up correctly because what those two little green tabs do is they actually shut off your turn signal as you turn the wheel. So, for instance, you see this little, there's a little arm down here. You put your turn signal on as the wheel comes around and hits that little arm, it actually kicks your turn signal off so that is why that is keyed like that also it'll help you know just an overall alignment so 
check uh, your clock springs. A lot of times with clock springs, these two tabs, one of them can get broken off. Um, pretty, I, I would probably get a new one if one was broken off because it does need to be, does need to stay and not move around. Now, before we put it on there, we're gonna go ahead, put our two connectors in because it's easier with it out. Just slide right in, go over the shaft there, and we'll just push it in just like that. Once it's all the way in, you can go ahead, pull out the little key, and now we're ready to go ahead and put our steering wheel on. Now one thing we noticed taking this Jeep apart is a lot of times there will be a metal panel behind there which I believe is the submarine protection. For some reason in this Jeep it doesn't have one. I don't think they changed that in the model years. I'm thinking someone may have just left that out at some point. But normally we don't have to remove that metal piece to get these out but you may want to just to make it a little bit easier. All right, so now we can put the steering wheel back on. We've put some Loctite, blue Loctite on the nut. Now the steering wheel is keyed, so you're gonna to make sure you're putting on the same way you took it off. First, we need to feed the wires through the bottom hole in the steering wheel. Line it up. Now I'm not gonna really tighten it down with the impact here because this nut, or excuse me, this bolt does have a torque value for it. Uh, what you'll need to do is you'll want to torque this down to 40 foot pounds. You may need to have, a, I would recommend also having someone maybe help hold the wheel. Um, I don't know if you'd want to put all that pressure against the steering wheel lock. Um, but yeah, you might do that as well. Next, we'll go ahead and rehook up the green connector. Put that back in the hole if it still works. Then we will connect now the airbag and the horn. It's a little spade connector, it can be a little bit of a pain. Make sure you get it all the way down in there. The airbag connector can take a little bit of force to have to get it. It pops down in there because it is an airbag and safety related. It has a, some pieces in there that hold the connector together that you have to overcome. So now with that, we'll put our bolts in the back of the airbag and we're done. So there you have it. Really not a difficult job as long as you have that steering wheel puller and we can put a link in the description to uh, the kind of steering wheel puller here that we, we use so hopefully should get you through this job fairly easily with some other hand tools. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them here on this video. Uh, like I said, for that clock spring, if you're looking for the 0102 clock spring with cruise control, look for the link in the description or check out tabucustoms.com for that. Rust repair kits, skid plates, other Jeep related items. With that, that's all we've got. Thank you for watching. A like and subscribe, greatly appreciated.